Hey guys, and welcome back to another lesson. Today I'd like to show you something I call an infinitely descending uh, chord progression. And basically it's something along uh, these lines. So let me explain what it is exactly I played and then what you can do with it. So the secret, quote unquote, behind this chord progression is really simple. It's really a, sort of a unit cell that repeats itself. Let's start with a C major, with a C, and play a C major, and then count down three semitones and play the minor. One, two, three. We're at A, so we're gonna play A minor. And then count down four semitones. One, two, three, four. So we're at F and play F major. And then three semitones, one, two, three, and play a D minor. And then four semitones, one, two, three, four, and play a B flat major. And three semitones in a minor. And four in a major. And three in a minor. And four in a major. And so on. until you get back to the original chord you've started from. And <clears throat> you can also see this progression currently on the screen. Now, a couple of things. First of all, what is this good for? And the first answer is that it's a really great practice tool. So it forces you, if you haven't done this, or you know something similar to this, it really forces you to understand, to construct chords and memorize them so you can play this progression fluidly. So you're going to have to remember all of these chords I just played and basically they cover pretty much the entire gamut of uh, triads, both major and minor. <clears throat> uh, it's also a great practice tool, for example, you could tell yourself I'm going to play this progression but I'm going to keep the voice leading as smooth as possible. So you started with a C and you know you're supposed to go to an A minor. So then you can say which A minor is closest, which voicing or inversion of A minor is closest to the C major. And you can play this particular inversion of A minor. And then you can say, okay, next one is an F major. Which inversion is closest to this A minor? Which inversion of F major that is? And it's this one. Then you can figure out which inversion of the next chord, which is a D minor, is closest to this F major. And you can keep on going for the B flat major, G minor, E flat major, C minor, A flat major, F minor, D flat major, uh, B flat minor, <coughs> G flat major, and, and so on. And the answer will also change depending on the inversion you've started from. Uh, so, for example, if I start with this inversion of C major, I'm going to get a different answer. So, C major to A minor, F major to D minor, B flat major to G minor. So, again, this is a great practice tool for getting your triads sort of under control. It's also great if you want to practice something else. For example, say you want to practice arpeggios. So you can say, okay, I'm going to practice my arpeggios, but with this particular chord progression. Let's say you have a particular pattern like this. So you can play it C, A minor, F, D minor, and then of course you'll have to jump an octave for the B flat major, G minor, E flat major, and then again, jump an octave for the C minor, A flat major, F minor, D flat major, and so on. 
So you can really use this to practice pretty much anything and it makes sure you cover all of the different major and minor chords. The second use is of course, you know, if you're writing a song or you're playing a chord progression, this might give you an idea of something to try out. So let's say you have this chord progression, an F to a G to a C. Uh, and you can say, okay, F, I'm going to start my infinitely descending chord progression, just, just do it a little bit for one or two chords and then keep on go back to the G to the C. So in between the F and the G, I'm going to insert the D minor, the B flat major, and then the G and the C. So instead of playing I might play Of course it depends on you know how much how fast your chord progression is changing and how much time you have to squeeze in more chords maybe I've squeezed in one too many maybe I should have only tried the D minor but you know it's it's something to try out it gives you an idea of what to do which is sort of a great tool. And now we come to the third point of this video, which is the fact that I can't say there is something very unique or special about the particular uh, intervals I've chosen. So personally, I find these this set to be pretty pleasing. Uh, doing a major, doing the minor three semitones below it, and then going down four semitones and repeating again. But Who's to say that you can come up with your own infinitely descending pattern? Let's say uh, just something silly, you know, let's play a major chord, then the major chord, four semitones below it, one, two, three, four, and then a major chord, two semitones above it, and then repeat the entire pattern. So start from this, count four down and two up. 4 down and 2 up, 4 down and 2 up, 4 down, 2 up, 4 down, 2 up, 4 down, 2 up. So maybe this isn't as interesting as the one I originally played, and it also only has major chords. But you can <clears throat> experiment, of course, and try to come up with your own sort of patterns that that please you and I think that's really the most interesting take-home message you can take from this video just go to your keyboard and pick like you know you can just pick something almost random uh, again let's say let's start from the root and let's go uh, four semitones up and then for to a minor and then one semitone down to a major And then let's say uh, two semitones up to a major. So that's this unit cell and then start it all over again. So I have major, four up minor, one down major, two up major. And then let's repeat again. I start again my starting position, so to speak. Then I do four up minor, which is an A minor. So let's play this together. And then I can repeat it again, of course. So <clears throat> Of course, you know, you can choose pretty much whatever you want and just sit down, figure out the chords and play it and see if you can get something that sounds good. You know, I by, by no means have a monopoly over this idea or what I've shown you isn't the only way of playing, playing this sort of uh, progression. So it's, I really think it's something that you should play around with and I, I hope this gives you an idea of something that you can, that you can do. And with that said, I'll just say I hope you've learned something interesting and I'll see you next time.